No, no, that's why we're bringing this forward. They, they have, the reports have not been high support. And the AG is saying, no, now you need to report it unless you put in code. That's why we have to look for it. Yes, it's not the case. That kind of thing is general. Very good questions for the page. Do we have anybody like to speak in favor of the legislation? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Wayne Huggins represents State Police Association. Uh, I became a trooper in 1971. The practice that we are seeking to cut up by here, and we appreciate you all know, bringing this, has been in existence at least that long. Uh, I don't know how far back it goes before 1971, but I can tell you that our practice has been in effect. Now, one of the things I would hasten to add is, in our case, the state police, we have what's called an interdepartmental safety program. Every crash that we are involved in, some of our, quite frankly, intentional crashes, where we are not pursuing somebody, and the only way to stop that uh, that pursuit is to spin them out. It's called a pit maneuver. Our people are specially trained to be able to do that. Uh, every crash you review, if the trooper is found to be negligent in any way whatsoever, all actions are on the table, up from and including oral counseling, on up to being charged, being fired. Indeed, when I was superintendent of state police, I did have to fire a couple of people for negligent driving. Our main concern, though, was what this would do if it appeared on their personal driving record to their ability to get insurance and what would happen to their personal insurance rates. I mean, I don't think it's beyond the realm of possibility that an insurance company finds out that I'm a state trooper and knows that I'm out in ice storms and hurricanes and involved in pursuits, high-speed driving every single day in my employment, what is that gonna do to my insurance rates? Are they even gonna give me insurance? That's the concerns that we have. All we're asking you to do is to codify the way we've been in the practice for at least the last 46 years here in the state of Virginia. Very much appreciate your support. Okay, I, it just seems like something that's a piece missing to this puzzle, okay? Mm -hmm. So it's been a practice been a practice for over 40 years, mm -hmm. and now there is the AG's office is saying you need to put this in the code. I mean, it's been a practice, there's been no problem, mm -hmm. but all of a sudden it needs to be put in code. And, and I'm, I'm just trying for clarification, just trying to understand what, why we a, a different agency that was not law enforcement asked if they if their employees could be have go under the same policy that happened to law enforcement. Oh. Uh, Okay, so then the AG's office said, well, wait a minute, can we do that? Okay. Uh, let's look at this, wait a minute. And so then the AG's office solved this the case. They asked, well, can, the, can law enforcement be doing that? The AG's office okay. said, well, no, actually, you shouldn't be doing that. Put a bill in, make it law, and then it's fine. Got it. Got it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Police Chief Association for what he said. Also, the other thing that I'll mention more quickly is we really don't want our officers to have to take into consideration when they are making an emergency call, driving in the weather or whatever the case may be, that they have to then take into consideration the personal driving record. If that impacts <coughs> how they may respond, we want them to be able to respond with the public's interest first. So thank you very much for your consideration, Mr. Yes, sir. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. Good afternoon. I'm not going to repeat everything that's been said. I'm John Jones with the Sheriff's Association. We very much support the bill. All it does is allow us to continue to do business as we're doing it right now. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, I'm with the Committee of Sean Young, Virginia Police and Health Association. Uh, my 5,000 members that I represent in the state of Virginia as law enforcement professionals will be personally impacted if this were to be reported in their insurance rates. Could absolutely go up as a result, and, and not as long as uh, uh, Wayne, but I, I was in law enforcement since 1984, that's when I started, and I'm um, with Alexandria, and that's been the practice the entire time. Thank you, thank you for your service as well. Mr. Chairman, just very quickly, we appreciate the patron there, and that's absolutely, we, we've been doing it. We can't figure out how long we've been doing it, at least in the 60s, maybe even before that. And we may, we may even have a document somewhere from the Attorney General at that time we've approved this, but uh, uh, it's just so much cleaner to put it in the code for us. And, but I will tell you, uh, I am administratively will continue the status quo until July 1, uh, because this is what we've always done, and uh, let the Attorney General's office know that that's what we're going to do. Do we have anybody in the opposition to the bill? I'll let you know. 
Thank you, committee. Just to mention, first of all, I really appreciate uh, Doug on bringing this bill. The idea of a policeman in hot pursuit having to file an action report is, is ludicrous to me. And I don't like it for that reason. I also don't like it because if a policeman has to file an action report, um, there may be some lawyer out there that says maybe there's not complete 100% sovereign immunity working here. So I might be able to take the file of the action report as some kind of a weird theory to try to get civil liability uh, on some baroque theory against the arresting officer that, that the officer had to have to. Um, so I think it's a great bill on that. I have to love you, Miller. Um, if, um, if you want to have an emergency club on the bill, if that is something you'd like to see, uh, given, as Commissioner Holcomb said, he's going to enforce whatever the existing laws in July the 1st. It's not needed, that's fine, but I just um, about the testimony you've made, uh, but I just feel that for consideration if that's indeed needed. I believe that's the I don't think you put the yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think the AG kind of made a statement on that. Like, that they won't start making an issue so it's fine. But I very much appreciate that. So, for each. Final question or comment? Second. All right. Move the report and second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. 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 Yes, sir. Order quickly. We've got two little bits of house cleaning and they're easy. So, no to rush. Now until 1742. We ask that that will be late on the table. So, move Mr. Truman. We have a second. Second. All in favor say aye. Opposed? Good stuff. House Bill 1687 is an ask to go by so moved, Mr. Chairman. I get a second. Can I get it all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. We're done for the day.